unique selling point. Meet somebody who's actually used the word unique in their name. So then we're going to be learning a lot about why it's important to be unique in business. How can you be unique? Here from Milan, from Unicum, who's been in business for the last 20 years. We've got some really good wisdom to be sharing with the community today. Milan, welcome to the session. Great to have you on board. Great to meet you, Amit, and thank you for the invite. My absolute pleasure. So, Milan, why don't we kick off by you telling us a bit about what your business is and, you know, what kind of services you provide? Yeah, sure. Uh, so, technically, we are... The reason why we call ourselves unique is because our value proposition is... We, 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 we say that it is unique, but let me tell you a bit more about that. So, technically, we, we help companies by offering complete array of financial services from accounting to the CFO. So technically, that's why we're unique, because usually in the markets, you have providers that do either first piece or the second piece, but there are no, so far, there is no holistic provider for the services from accounting to the CFO. And that's why we're unique. So technically, we help companies of different sizes to manage their, the performance of their business. How do we do that? We do that by um, depending on the size of the company, we have different packages. So we've predefined, no, based on all of the 20 years that you said at the beginning of the experience that we've had in this area of finance and general management in various sizes of the businesses as well, we know that different types of businesses based on the size and their life cycle have different needs. So mm. that's why we've technically predefined, you know, the three ways in which, or let's say the three packages in which we support companies, Starter, Flex, and Prime. And based on the size and the needs of the company, we technically help uh, either a startup founder or even like a, an owner of an established business to manage the performance of their business through the set of financial KPIs and the business KPIs. So mm -hmm. what is the way to, um, to, to kind of, is, or let's say, is there a way to steer your business through, I would say, like a, like a, a single set of um, both financial and business KPIs, yes, that is possible. And that's what actually we help them. So if you are a founder and uh, you are struggling with the, you know, like, oh my God, what is EBITDA? How do I actually improve my performance? Or if you're a, an owner of an existing business and then you're struggling with um, uh, with either your, your, your chan sales channels and trying to unlock certain optimization potential within your internal business, that's where we actually step in and we help uh, the companies because our value proposition is that we want to be your trusted financial advisor and your trusted financial partner for um, for, for all these uh, areas that I've just mentioned. Interesting. You, you mentioned a really important point there um, about KPIs and how KPIs are really important to be uh, looked at, measured and reviewed. So a lot of businesses that I come across Typically, when I mention the word KPI, I think, hmm, there are so many KPIs out there. Where do I start? Which is an important one? I mean, Milan, from your experience, if there was a business owner, you know, just turning over around or less than a million pounds, what would you say are the top handful of KPIs they should be at least monitoring to help them move forward in business? Yes, that's a very good question, Amit, and thank you for that. So technically... Um, the, the the what we what we why we actually um, um, help the um, the the founder or the founders or the owners of the business that you've just mentioned who are struggling or are wondering which KPIs should they introduce, we actually have predefined sets of KPIs and uh, management reporting packs that are relevant for a certain industry because from industry to an industry, you know, the KPIs are different because for example, uh, an IT tech or a tech startup uh, or, and uh, a small manufacturing business, they don't have the same KPIs. However, there are some common denominators for, for even, I would say a startup and, um, and, uh, and the mid-sized established business um, uh, that can still be, you know, kind of uh, common and can be used for both such as, for example, you have EBITDA, you have cash burn rate, you have certain, uh, in this case, maybe even some working capital or R&D costs, etc. So things mm -hmm. that are, you know, kind of, I would say still 
um, 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 can be uh, would be still important for both for all the business or let's say across all industries. However, depending on an industry in which business is operating, for example, again, if you are a tech startup, then for you it's really important to understand what's uh, to have the the the, the salary or let's say the salaries of your team are actually your main cost block. So you want to have your team utilized the best way. You want to have you make sure that you have the timesheets that you have the allocation per project and per um, uh, or a certain client, etc. You need to know how fast your onboarding client, what's your churn rate, etc. So things like that are mm-hmm. you know I just gave you like there maybe five six KPIs that would be relevant for that type of business however if you are a manufacturing business or a small you know like I would say mid-sized manufacturing company then for you it's really important to understand first of all your supply chain so how uh, if the benchmark for example for your type of industry and for your uh, size of the company is that your supply chain or your cog shouldn't be more than for example 35 percent of your net sales mm. and then you're around 40 42 45 47 that means that you have 10 percentage points actually of optimization potential if you are uh, or let's say if your supply chain is more expensive than your peer group so mm-hmm. that's why uh, you know really depending on on uh, or let's say highlighting and doing this in, in the methodology that we actually implement. And when we start working with our clients, we call it the three steps approach in which the first step we do the gap analysis. And in the gap right. analysis, we highlight these elements that I've just mentioned. So for example, we call it like a, a, like almost like a scanning phase where we look into the business and um, we are trying to address uh, you know, as me- as most uh, improvement areas as possible. We there are mm. two ways in which we do gap analysis. We can focus only on finance processes, but we can also fo- focus on the business overall, where we actually help the business owners uh, by highlighting the so-called the value pot. So we do the value discovery exercise, and we tell them exactly like I just you know uh, gave you a, uh, like I gave you an example. Uh, your supply chain is too expensive, or for example, if you are uh, you are uh, you're not um, utilizing or not addressing your sales channels uh, directly through your commercial policy. So, for example, you have your you're a distributor. You also have a distribution um, of your finished goods. And then you are mostly working, for example, with um, with um, uh, not not the uh, traditional uh, traditional trade, but mostly through an organized trade. And then in that case, unless your commercial policy is is, is adapted to that uh, sales channel, then you're missing the opportunity there. You're you're you're, you're losing certain uh, top line potential by not yeah. addressing that properly. And then we help them. By highlighting, for example, that area, we quantify and tell you this is how much hundreds of thousands of pounds or tens of thousands or millions, depending on the size of potential you have there. And then we can help you as well, you know, at the next stages, um, while we work with the business, we help them to actually unlock that potential and to make sure that they, you know, that these uh, uh, value uh, areas or let's say the value pots that we've highlighted uh, at the end uh, land to their P&L. Gotcha, gotcha. That makes absolute sense. They're starting off by creating a bit of a gap of where they are and where they want to be. Um, talking of where they are and where they want to be, you're, you are in a really important phase in your business where um, you're growing, getting the right funding to make you grow. So tell us a bit more about, um, you know, as a business, Unicum, where are you looking to be in the next five years? Yeah, what we, we have... We have a very ambitious, so let's say we are a small team at the moment, but we don't lack ambition to put it this way. So what we aim to be is uh, um, uh, our aspiring um, um, uh, target is actually to be the number one provider in Europe for the ecosystem, or let's say for the market area that we play. And that's mm-hmm. really ambitious. However, uh, for for the short period of time, what we managed to do is technically, you know, to kind of... Um, um, so to have the proof of concept and to already start onboarding clients and having and, and generating revenue and luckily for us have you know the the happy clients but also what we are identifying is that on the road our digital our digital roadmap um, has even more potential that we that we you know expected at the beginning so that's okay. why I think every day or let's say every step while uh, we're closer or let's say 
any just through every next day i think we are as well what is that that's why everything is so you know kind of as well interesting and um, is inspiring is because you almost every day you learn something new and then you see actually that um uh, what is positive is that you get reassurance or let's say you get somehow mm. confirmation of that big picture that two years ago was i would say you know a bit blurry and you oh, kind of very, did, yeah. yes you did some prep work you try to identify and to quantify your market however i think that each day you're almost you know um uh seeing new opportunities and i think what is really important is uh not to lose focus so you still you can't chase all the rabbits. <laughs> you need to in order to to get to that aspiring target that I tell you at the beginning uh, is you know it really makes it's it, you we really need to make sure that we stay focused and that we you know try not to kind of dilute uh, yeah. you know our focus because you also have limited resources and you need to make sure that um, at the end you you still uh, don't lose focus from your clients. Yeah, that makes that's such an important point you mentioned. I'm being focused. And not diluting the focus because we don't have ample resources. Not everyone does anyway. Exactly. Um, so, on this journey where you've um, been kind of learning as you go along, you've set an ambitious goal. You go on in Europe for what you do, and every day you say it can be different. You're learning something new and getting affirmations or confirmations of your goal. That's very encouraging. So, um, taking a look back now, uh -huh. um, in the twenty years you've been in business, and but more recently in this one, what would you say are your three lessons you've learned as an entrepreneur that you think other entrepreneurs should maybe listen out for and be aware of to help them in their journey? Yes. I think that the lesson number one would be uh, unless you are ready to take risks and you are ready to be agile and I would even say somehow um, be able to really deal with ambiguity. Don't don't go down this route because it's definitely you know the 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 if if you compare you know the corporate environment to you know to the entrepreneurship, I think these three would be again it's it's an it's still number one, but these three are somehow the the things that you know I think um, unless you're really you know, you, you're really sure that you can deal with all of that, that uh, you shouldn't go for an entrepreneurship road. <laughs> that's that's, so that's, that's one thing. Sharing. So being able to take risks, um, being agile, and um, being able to deal with the ambiguity, that we're dealing with the uncertainty of risk, isn't it? Yes, correct. Okay. Um, so that's, I think that would be, that would be three in, 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 in maybe like, in one. yes, in one. Uh, I think the second one is, 95% of what, you know, worked well, or let's say, uh, and the operating models, whatever it, it is, you know, what worked um, and made you successful uh, in the corporate life or in the corporate environment here won't work. <laughs> because, because it's like, you know, it's a completely different ecosystem. You are, you know, unlike um, when you're in corporate and you have, I was responsible for like three, four billion euros budgets. And then if you are, you know, there, you need to make sure that, you know, everybody within the, within the, you know, or let's say every piece of the, of the, of, of the command in the command chain and somehow is, you know, is, is, is working properly and that you're not, you're kind of sticking to, you know, um, to this overall set directions and it's mm -hmm. quite rigid. You really need to kind of uh, make sure that there are proper controls in the process that you follow that, that up. Um, here you have like at the beginning it was only me and the co-founder so it's like you know so you somehow get the idea of how obsolete mm. <laughs> almost everything that you kind of you know that you've learned and and you know also the uh the the, the process that you uh, I don't know the process but the environment that you used to operate in and thrive you know it's it, it, it's almost obsolete because yeah. unless you do it there's nobody else that's going to do it and then all of a sudden you learn that you need to be kind of, you know, uh, 
uh, a sales director, a marketing director, a general director, uh, a, a housekeeper. Finance director. Yeah, yeah a housekeeper, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, like uh, uh, buying uh, grocery buyers or, or whatever, Everything. you know, it's kind of, yeah, you need to, you need to do all of that. You need to write posts. You need to, you know, kind of uh, do this different type of things where, you know, like if I look at, you know, what I was doing before, you know, you would have, for example, you know, the brand strategy or, you know, these types of exercises that you would, you know, do, but, but by hiring an agency and, you know, then afterwards having your marketing team working on it and then they together present something and then you're kind of challenged, et cetera. So here it's all of that, you know, happening within your, you know, inside your head or with your co-founder. Yeah. So, so, so that, 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 I think that would be the second one. And then the third one is, I still do believe that having, you know, a track record within, 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 I would say, international established business will tremendously still help you. So if I said in the, the, the first two, I highlighted, you know, kind of what are the biggest differences, but how, but, but the third one would really emphasize the importance of having a chance to lead and to be part of, of an established business and international business, because, you don't call best practice, you know, best practice just, you know, for the name. You call it because, yeah. yes, you call it because, you know, the companies, big companies invest invest every year a lot of money into, you know, making something that becomes a best practice or, or, or nurturing the best practice. So mm-hmm. that's why, you know, kind of having this track record and understanding, you know, the importance of, of, of uh, the, the, you know, the vision and mission and, uh, and, and afterwards, because you know how they say, um, execution eats strategy for breakfast. So how, you know, discipline is important in, you know, achieving your goals and being really, um, you know, um, uh, I would say, um, being dedicated and disciplined over the process uh, mm-hmm. that, um, you know, every day you really need to stick to what you have planned to, you know, to do. And that's a small step towards that big, uh, you know, um, uh, goal that big, you have you on know. your mind. Yes. And also understanding, for example, as I've explained, like, you know, the importance of all of these processes, or let's say the parts of the value chain that you somehow learn by, uh, by having, you know, um, an opportunity to work in a big established business, these are the benefits that every founder, um, you know, would um, would have. Tre- they, they would contribute tremendously to to, to mm. the success of yeah. you know uh, of, of running the business. Because as I've said, like you know, what is good is once you had a chance to work within the best practice, uh, and, and and you know um, learn somehow these best operating models, then you can still, you know, do the cherry picking and then based on, you know, take the best, you know, from that environment and, 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 you know, kind of create something that would be, you know, really using the best elements uh, that would fit, correct, that would fit into your business. Yeah, so some really in-depth learnings there. The first of all, being agile and not being afraid of ambiguity because, you know, the business world is very uncertain. Secondly, I feel this pain has been felt with many people, which is you're wearing many hats, finance director, marketing, sales, operations, general manager, you're wearing so many hats all in one go at the same time. And finally, day-to-day disciplines and dedication. So important. Unless we achieve what we set out to achieve at the end of the day, we're not going to achieve the bigger goal. So we yes. Focus on yeah. today, absolutely. So looking ahead into the future, very last question. We're just running out of time. But the last question is look into the future. So the next uh, 12 months, forget the economy, forget the political climate, all that kind of external stuff, let's forget about that. As a business, what internal challenge do you reckon you've got to overcome as you go to the next level over the next 12 months, do you reckon? Yes, I think it's really um, kind of overcoming the obstacles that you have to unlock the next stage of growth, meaning that you are still at this stage able to balance between the running this small business, um, choosing the right partner for the next stage uh, in terms of the tech development and the further tech roadmap. And then the third one is 
uh, how do you actually, you know, make sure that uh, you as a startup have a viable funding structure so that you can, uh, you know, go to the next stage and unlock, you know, the next stage potential. I think for us, that's something for the, that's something for the next 12 months uh, mm. that we want to focus on. And we need to make sure that we maintain and grow the existing client base, but also, you know, focus on these two, because these two are actually uh, enablers for the next stage of growth. So it's a funding, looking after existing client base, huge challenge to overcome as you go from strength to strength. Milan, it's been an absolute pleasure having you here. I've made literally over one and a half pages of notes, or over one page of notes. Many lovely sharings over there. Yeah, making sure everyone's it needs the one thing in the last 15 minutes that can help them move forward even more. It's been a pleasure, Milan. Thank you very much. And um, I'll speak to you soon. Thank you, Amit. Thanks once more for the invite. And I really enjoyed this conversation. Our pleasure, mate.